Secondly, under the IREX Fellowship, he has built capacity around research ethics, integrity, and compliance. And you may not understand what this epitomizes until we come to big grants. It has been part of big grant implementation under the NIH. Those are the big granting agencies. That's the National Institutes of Health in the US. Uh, they have almost about 27 subcategories of mega grants, and it has been part of that. And at the platform for grant implementation are issues surrounding research ethics, compliance, responsible conduct of research, research integrity. And our friend and brother here has built substantial capacity around this area. This is not the first time he's making this kind of presentation. He was given a Carnegie Corporation grant to make, this corporation, to make this presentation in the US and in Egypt. That is part of the track record he has built for himself. He has inspired all of us, for those who know him, that from the registry or from whatever arm of the university, you could create a niche for yourself. And that is what Mr. Kindele has done. So let's give him a round of applause. So a great pleasure to have you here. You are welcome. Well, I am intimidated. And uh, can we uh, control home? I want to appreciate my hosts, Professor Mrs. Ken De Taiwo and uh, Professor Seni. I will not forget to recognize Professor Ogumbo Dede, the Vice Chancellor of this university, for the opportunity he has given to us to be able to do this program. So, well, I believe that I am a support staff in the university administration, and without the beams and the pillars, the structure will collapse. So, when it gets too academic, uh, you may pardon me, but if it is administration, you may not pardon me. But then, we want to start saying that this is a synergy of administration, as well as what? As well as academic. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, the first topic we want to take, because of the time, I want a timekeeper. On this slide, I want to use maybe about 20 minutes. I want a timekeeper. When I'm 10 minutes, when, when, when I've spent 10 minutes, you give me a signal. Okay, when I'm in 15 minutes, you give me another signal. Okay, who is, who should I look out for, please? Okay, thank you very much. All right. So we want to talk about research ethics, research in integrity, and responsible conduct of research. And the subtitle here is research ethics compliance. Well, when we talk about research ethics, we may be talking about the culture that guide research to be done in the proper way. Okay? I mean, we may not use too much academic terminology. Next slide. This is the UICHS Committee of the University of Ibadan. This is where we have the Secretariat of the Ethics Committee. I don't know where we have the Ethics Committee Secretariat here in IFE. Faculty of Earth Sciences. Okay, thank you very much. So in case you don't know, they have it at the Faculty of Earth Sciences. Yes, next slide. Well, I was privileged to be at um, the University of California, Davis, during my Rex experience. And uh, this was a very rough picture I took of, uh, at the Office of Research Compliance and Integrity. That was why we are the, you know, they trained me better to be able to understand the global north, you know, and the global south. Okay, next slide. Next slide, please. 
Well, this was the Golden Gate Bridge, rough picture that I took there at San Francisco during my tour. Okay, next slide. Well, I think I found a twin brother at uh, the conference of rectors, vice chancellors, and um, and uh, uh, president of African University in Cairo, Egypt, where I went to present a paper, and that, that was where I actually met Professor Gubadedi for the first time. So, but I found a twin brother at that conference. So, that's the picture. Yes, next slide. Well, this was at National Institute of Health, Beth Sida. So, well, my picture could be in one of those places. So, next slide. I think what we are doing may look like a picture, but don't worry. We are going to get to the call. So, yeah. And uh, can you locate the man in the middle? Eh? The vice chancellor of uh, this university. Okay, next slide. Yes, some of the research journeys that we have done, because if you are into research, it will take you around the world, irrespective of who you are, and you must be ready to collaborate. If you are not ready to collaborate, you should not get into the world of research. If it is you want to publish, you know, for promotion alone, well, there's no problem. So, publish or perish. You can become a professor, but what impact are you going to leave on the sand of time with research? What are they going to know you for? What patent are you going to give to, 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 the, uh, to the academic world? So, next slide. Yes, it was when I went to present a paper in a at the National Conference of University Research Administrator, well, I presented with some people from China and Japan. Next slide. Yes, I think we are done with all the ferry ferry. Let's go to the real thing, okay? When we talk about guideline for proposal submission to the ethics office, our own practice at the University of Ibadan. You know, many years ago, around 2011, Ibadan came to Ife to learn. But I was shocked when I saw Professor Seni in my office, Professor uh, Mrs. Kinde Taiwo, and another professor. <laughs> I saw them in my office. They said they've come to learn. From. I said, no, that couldn't be. Because many years ago, we came to learn from you. But they said the structure that time was not sustained. I hope by this that we are doing, you are going to sustain the efforts of these professors when they are gone. And it's not going to be that uh, uh, you will come to Ibadan to learn again. So now the guideline for proposal, the cover page of the proposal, and the cover page of the proposal, what should be there? Who can tell, you know, I need a microphone because it's going to be interactive. Yes. Give it to whosoever that wants to. Yes. The cover page of a proposal. Yes. What's going to be there? Ah, people are raising their hands. Yes. Ms. Madam Victoria. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Uh, I think the most important thing that should be on the cover page is the proposal title. Excellent. So, proposal title, yes. So, and next to it should be the supervisor certification in case it is student research. Okay? And thereafter, we have the co investigator certification if it is multiple research, okay? So that is the process of writing a research ethics proposal. Yes, next one. So what else should we have in the outline? 
to have the background to the study. And the first thing we have to do is that before we can talk about yesterday, we have to be in today, and we've got to make a reflection on yesterday. Okay? Now, research is three days. Yesterday, today, eh? and what you are trying to work on is you are trying to project into tomorrow. So, that is why you've got to reflect on the current knowledge. And the current knowledge that you have today is about what somebody has said yesterday. So, and thereafter, the rationale for the study, you just have to justify why you want to do it. This is the cross of the matter. Now, who wants to quickly become professor here that is not, that is not a professor? If you are not a professor, put up your hand. <laughs> you want to quickly become professor, put up your hand. Okay, yes, great. Now, Now, if you really want to be quickly become professor in this part of the world, what you do is that you just find a topic, okay, that you feel that you can write on, and your friend in Port Harcourt, they are floating a journal, okay, and they, they've told you to please submit some things, and you, you do that research. So that you'll be able to present paper at that conference. Okay? And when you present paper at that very particular conference, it adds to your paper and you grow. So, most of the time, the justification for writing our paper is like that. I'm sorry. Okay? But then, justification. Why do we really want to do a particular research? Research is meant to solve the problem of the society without a research impacting the society. The research is what? The research is useless. And our culture of publish or perish, we should change it as from today to what? Who can craft it for me? Research or perish. So, the justification for the study should be there for the research. But then, the objective of the study, we should have it as well. Okay, next slide. And uh, all this you should know already because you are the one that you are in charge. The, risk, the study design, the study setting, and the study population, sample size determination, sampling technique, inclusion and exclusion criteria. Yes, let's go on. Now, the method of data collection is very important. And that is why, who is a statistician here? A statistician? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Please, can you stand up for recognition? Please. I'm sorry. I want to make a point. I want to make a point. Now, please stand up. Ah, please. Ah. They don't know you. you are, they, know, they have to know you from today. Before you design a particular research, and you talk, you talk about uh, sample size, whose opinion should you seek? Statistician. How many of us are guilty of not involving statistician ab initio in our research? Huh? Therefore, go and see no more. Please sit down. Oh, thank you very much. God bless you. Yes, laboratory procedure. That yes, let's let's move on. Move on, move on, move on. So ethical consideration. Next slide. Now, confidentiality of data. Do we have people from the medics here? The medical area. Oh, thank you very much. 
Now, when you take, when you collect data from people, for instance, now, I've taken the blood sample of some patients, so uh, last year, okay? And when I took the blood sample of those patients last year, it was meant to study, uh, it was meant for, for malaria. Now I've discovered, let's not go there yet. <laughs> so I've taken that, that data. And uh, when I've taken the data, so for me to protect the participants, okay? For me to protect the pa participants, what should I do? What should I do? Yes, come. Uh, the identity. The identity. Yeah. Okay. Codes. Um, you can label by codes on the bottles. Okay. And in a, probably in a in a coded computer, you then have the codes that tell excellent, you. Excellent. Excellent. We know it. Okay. The confidentiality of data is very important and of the sample. If we are going to do internationally respected research, and all these things that we do in this part of the world. Eh? They call us global eh? south. I don't know why we are south and they are not. I don't understand. So they call us global south. You know, confidentiality, we are not taking it very seriously. Next slide, please. Translation of protocol. I want to do a research in uh, Ileife. And I want to do it at uh, which market is popular here? Eh? Oh, yes, huh? oh, the market. market. Okay. M could, should I go to the market with English protocol informed consent? Why should I not go? You can just put up your hand and, and talk and talk. Yes, yes. Okay, now you translate it into what language? language. Which language? Yoruba language. Okay, if you go to Sabo, which language must you translate it to? Okay, that means if your research covers Sabo and Odaobe, you know, how many translations must you do? Do we do it? Do we always do it? Translating to two languages? Okay, all right, next slide. Now, beneficence to participants, okay? Now, when you are doing a research, and some people are participating in that research, what is the benefit of the research to them? Or you just want to use them like uh, laboratory mouse? Even laboratory mouse in the US, they have their rights. Animal rights, they can burn down the whole of effect because of animal rights. Okay, what research have you done? I, I want somebody to volunteer, researcher. Yes, microphone, please. Somebody, I want to ask a question. Yes, please. Here. Yes. Can you tell me one of your research? Yes. What you have done? I did effects of genetic education on um, secondary school students. Okay. In Elisha East. Okay. Um, local government. Area. So effect of genetics education. education. Yeah. So what was the benefit of that research or perceived benefit to the to the participants? The immediate benefit. They were given the opportunity to do their phenotype testing free of charge okay. if they volunteered. And I was able to do for more than two fifty. Okay. with their results after counseling okay. and they took that away and what is then the benefit to them what they were able to be informed of what is their genetic makeup does they be able to make future uh decision on who to marry and the implication and, yeah and prevent giving birth to sickle cell disease children fantastic fantastic you did 
excellently well because of course that is the primary benefit to them what is the future benefit to them because the research passed through ministry of education we were able to try thinking about bringing genetic screening into the curriculum of school as one of the criteria to 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 to, to, to clap for her clap for her yeah. give it to her now at least so that's it so when you are thinking research think about yesterday eh? think about today and think about tomorrow what legacy will you leave what impact will you leave on the society okay so if we have faculty of engineering in obafemi awolowo university and we have problem with electricity uh -uh. if we have a uh, you know we have a faculty of uh, design and whatever whatever in uh, i'm sorry i'm so i hope i'm not stepping on toes i'm not stepping on toes so i'm building a collapsing where we have professors of building design eh? so it's a it's not a shame uh, it's a challenge it's a challenge next one now when you are doing some research who is a sociologist here thank you ma can you stand up for recognition ah baba ani lo ke wa sa o te ni be microphone lowo so please be in the middle so that <laughs> no no problem we are just now give give her the microphone now, in case you want to interview widows or widowers, would that cause any harm to them as a sociologist? No. Yes. Well, it depends on what you want to ask. Yes. Even any question along being widowed or being a widower, will it have effect? Okay, yes. yes. So, a psychologist here, a psychologist, psychologically, what effect will it have? It's, uh, it's emotional effect because there will be a, a flashback of what has happened mm -hmm. that can cause emotional distress. So, that means you must take into consideration the distress that may happen and you must find a way by which you're going to address it in your research when you are writing your research ethics protocol next slide so for laundriness so i think you can see those hands can we raise up our hands uh -huh. The people that didn't raise up their hand, they didn't volunteer. So that means anybody that does not volunteer must not be forced to volunteer. That is voluntariness. So next slide. Informed consent. Meaning yes or no. Okay? When you write your informed consent document, which language must you write it? Is it in the language of a professor? I can hear yes or no. Is it in the language of a professor? That no is not resounding. Okay. Is it in the language of a PhD holder? Which la Okay, it depends. Okay, if you are interviewing a professor. Of a professor. Good, good, good. Yes. That is great. That is great. Yes. So, but normally, if we are using the community, okay, there was a time I was in the Barapa community and primary care programs. So, now, if you are using the community, you have to speak the language of the community. Okay? For instance, if I want to write a, a, an informed consent, five minutes, 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they said it's 20 minutes. Ah, what shall we do? Okay. 20 minutes already. Hmm. Ah. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've done some error analysis. Error analysis, you can scroll up. So, I've done some, there is, just scroll up. There are a lot of materials there. So, I've done some, some error analysis here. So, of what you must do, yes, scroll up, of what you must not do when you are submitting a research ethics protocol. Okay? Yes. And I put the solutions there. Yes. Move on. Move on. Just move on. Just move on. The study population. So, how you must specify it, not in uh, IFE. Among secondary school students in Iriwale local government, IFE. Yes. Move on. Sample size determination. So, sampling technique. So, yes. The sampling technique, I think the, the statistician, please, do you have a clinic, a statistic clinic here? Ah. Sir, they need a statistic clinic where the researchers can go ab initio and consult a statistician so that they will be able to use the right sampling technique and the right instrument from the beginning. That is calling for multidisciplinary uh, study. So, uh, well, I'm a Yoruba boy. I'm a Yoruba boy. And uh, in Yoruba, they said, don't help me eat the meat. It will chase away a very big grass cutter. Ma ba me jaye adu. Eno lo man shikini. Eno lo man lilo. So, if you don't collaborate, if you really don't collaborate together, you say, X, you don't know what you are doing. You are undoing yourself because you need X and X needs Y and Y needs etc. So, I don't know what that means in mathematics. So, inclusion and exclusion criteria. You should specify it. Yes, move on. Move on. The method of data collection is the validation of your weights. If an instrument has never been used, you have to go through the process of validation before it could be done. And the validation of instruments could only be professionally done by who? By who? By statisticians. It could only be professionally done by a statistician. Take note of that. Yes. Let's move on. The method of data analysis. Yes. Move on, move on, move on. So, thank you for listening. At least, are we spend 25 minutes? 24. That's great. That's great. So, thank you very much. So, should we ask questions or we go on? Okay. Yeah. So, can we go to research integrity research compliance and integrity aha uh -huh. this one okay yes this one will be more interactive so it will be more interactive you know when we talk about research ethics you know we follow some rules and we have stipulated that when we now go to Research compliance. If there are no rules, are there any, is there anything we should comply with? Huh? Okay. Now, in the university, in Nobafe Miawolo University, what are the rules and regulations that guide our research? How many people have seen documents to that effect? Yes, if you have seen a document to that effect, please put up your hand. Documents or for Bafe Miawolowa University that stipulate the rules and regulation, the rules of engagement in research. Yes. 
Ah, okay. Sir, they said. Ah. Ah. We have a lot of work to do. Okay, now, can I ask, is there anybody in um, uh, biostatistics here? Biostatistics? Anyone? Nobody? Biostatistics. That is in a... In OAU, there is, we have a department in uh, College of Medicine, the, the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics. It's not an OAU. Ah. I think. Okay, no problem. Who wants to work in the area of compliance? You want to work there? So, John Hopkins University has a new program in research, compliance, and integrity. I think your university can send you so that you'll be able to build capacity in that area. Now, let's. I first presented this one at. Uh, at uh, Northwestern University Chicago training for researchers, but it's full of questions. So you enjoy it. So all the golden gates, just remove them, just be going because of time. So all the, uh, so now let's stay there. For the University of Ibadan, who is the, that is the first university There's another slide for that. Yes. Now, she has just told me about the basic definition of research integrity. But there is a slide that I think we do justice to that. Now, this is the real, this is what we have here. We have some document of the University of Ibadan that talks about research ethics. That talks about uh, that talks about uh, protocols and uh, some procedures that we used to do research at the University of Ibadan. These are some of it, okay? And uh, another one is research harmonized document on research compliance and integrity. Let's move on. Now, research integrity includes the use of honest and verifiable method in proposing, performing, and evaluating research. Use of honest, use of verifiable method. Now, if I say that there are 1,000 food seller at Ojagwe Market in Ife. If another researcher gets there, even if it, it does not get the 1,000, they must be able to tell him or her the other people went to Ojagwe Market and that is why they are not here. Very viable. So, in reporting recent results with particular attention to adherence to rules, regulation and guideline. Now, when you have research integrity, you know, integrity is, is a, a, what you can call honesty, okay? But then, when you report the results, do you adhere to rules and regulation? Now, if I use 20 participants, okay? And I'm reporting that, how many participants? Yes, somebody at the back. So when you use 20 participants, how many did you multiply it with in that paper? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So 
So if you now multiply it with 10 and 20 to be able to get some uh, substantial significant data, is that research integrity? You say so. Therefore, go and see no more. <laughs> Following commonly accepted professional codes and norms. What are the commonly acceptable professional codes and norms in, in a, our, our own area of specialization? If you're a medical doctor, the the hope is there for you. If you are a pharmacist, the hope is there for you. I think everybody is under one oath or the other here. But how many people have you know how many people are following the oath? That is the question. So research integrity, you know, is you must follow the norms. Okay. Research compliance. Compliance is the hallmark of research integrity. Compliance is the internalization of rule and operationalization of rules. You internalize it eh? out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth what? The mouth operates. The mouth speaks. Uh -huh. So, you internalize it, but if it's in your heart and not in your mouth or doing, it is not. Okay, compliance must subsist from start to close out. That means from the beginning to the end, you must comply with rules and regulation. And that is a challenge in Nigeria. Who has never beaten a traffic light here? Put up your hand. Ah, please, stand up for recognition. That's great. So, those are the good people. It is not compliance the state of who we'll enjoy it. Don't worry. Who we'll enjoy it? We not compliance the state of being in accordance with established guide guideline and specification governing research conduct. Okay, that is why. Uh, do you know about? Uh, Nigerian uh, Ethics Research Ethics Code. Have you ever heard about it? Etching Rec Code. How many people know about that? It's online. It's online. When you want to hide anything from an African man, it was in those days put it in books. Now it's put it on the internet. And they won't so it's there. So those rules and regulations are there. We must read them, internalize them, and operationalize them. Yes. This is University of Ibadan. Recite compliance and integrity routine toolkits. And the toolkits, you can find it online on our harmonized documents on research compliance and integrity. The full document is about 89 pages. But I'm going to just, you know, speak to some of those things. This was the grant I got from IREX. So we developed that document for the University of Ibadan. You know, I was the lead servant, you know, while we were developing this document. And uh, it's the document of the university today. If they are asking for research compliance and integrity document at NIH, that document is the one they are going to present. It passed through Senate, you know. What we did, we called stakeholders meeting, first stakeholders meeting, second stakeholders meeting. We did retreat about the people that uh, are, 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 board, uh, are members of our board. We did three days retreat to review the document after we have taken some months to write the document. So the document is very, very rich. But then, the lesson to learn from there, this is the toolkit, and these are the questions that the toolkit cover. You know, it's part of the document that is toolkit. Now, let's go to the question and answer. Now, yes, move on. 
Simu this is simulation based question. Yes, move on. Yes. No, let's let's get there. Now, international regulation. No, now you have to ask yourself a question when you are writing your proposal or when you are doing any research. Does this study violate any international research law or regulation? Yes or no? If I just pick a dog eh, and I just slaughter the dog, they said uh, if you kill a dog and you bury it in your house, it will prevent uh, termites. Is that not so? So, I can just pick a dog and just slaughter the dog and just bury it. And uh, I've done a research. Have I done a research? Does it violate any, any international law? Which law? Animal rights. How many of us know about animal rights? You, you want to talk, man? Yes, man. Yeah, how many of us? I say how many? How many of us? So, that means when we want to do international research, sir, do you know that uh, we have a lot of grants lying fallow at Erasmus for these, our researchers? They are not, they said Africa don't access their money and the money is there for them. And before we can access those money, we have to know those rules and regulations. So, does it violate any, any international law? You have to ask yourself the question. If you don't know, read about it before you put your pen on paper. If yes, explain. Okay, next one. Conflict of interest. We are still going to get to conflict of interest per se. But when they say, they talk about conflict of interest. What is conflict of interest? Okay? Conflict of interest is is simple. I am a lecturer at Obafemi Awolowo University. Abi? Yes. When I'm a lecturer at Obafemi Awolowo University, a faculty of pharmacy. Eh? Who is a pharmacist here? Ah, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. You are a pharmacist and they are trying to, to sell a drug and they want to do uh, some trial, phase one, phase two, phase three trial for that drug. And you are a consultant to maybe p and I I don't know the name of that uh, pharmaceutical company that wants to do it. And when you are now doing it, when they have uh, uh, employed you as a consultant, they are going to pay you in dollars, maybe bad money. Maybe for one week, they are going to pay you $10,000. And you are a member of the ethics committee in this university that will look critically into the protocol, whether it is safe or not. What will you do? Will you use your, your expertise, your knowledge, to protect the, to protect the people out there or you'll be looking at that money. Eh? Conflict of what? Interest. It could be financial. It could be commitment. It could be procedure. So, I think we should. Yes. You have to ask yourself that question. The co peer and the field worker and research admin participant. Hmm. 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 Who has ever got a grant here? A grantee. Ah, you, are, you had a grant. Yes, thank you. How many people did you say you are going to use? And how many people did you use eventually? And did you report back that uh, you did not use this for this oh, and you returned the money? So, that is where the problem that is where the problem is. We have to ask ourselves the question about integrity. What about research the feed workers, ah, that Nigeria is bad. May, may that Nigeria be a Nigeria of yesterday. But the Nigeria of the future, which you and I, we boys and girls, 
which we are forming, it should be a Nigeria that is good. Yeah. Okay. Now, the researcher and me, I'm participants. All these people, they will strengthen the research. So, and you've got to ask yourself that question. How many people are you supposed to use? How many people did you use? Yes. Next one. The issue of core PI. Let me hammer on that. A lot of people, when they are writing the research proposal, the core PI will be 10. They will use the CV of X, Y, Z as core PI. When the thing lands, they will cut off all the core PIs. And the core PIs, you cannot be everybody. The core PI has value which they should have to the research. And you cut them off. It's not going to work. Eh? It's not going to work. So, it's not going to be good research. Uh, PI monitoring of research assistants. When you say you want to monitor people in the field, and money has been allocated to them, did you, you know, did, did the PI monitor research assistants in the field, yes or no? If yes, how many times? Please provide evidence. When you are writing international grant, they will ask for all these things. If you think that uh, you, you are beating them here, when they are asking you questions, hmm, you can find yourself to blame. We are going to get to some naughty issue thereafter. Yes, next one. Standard facility and equipment. Uh, wh what's the name of this, your laptop, ma? HP. The name of this thing is HP. You say you're going to buy HP, and HP is 10,000 eh, Naira. And uh, instead, you bought Sinox. Sinox, 5,000 Naira. We Sinox perform as much as HP. Yes, next one. Salary and wages and incentive. Is it the correct salary, wages and incentive? Yes. Timeline for... <laughs> sir, I want to ask this question, sir. If people bring in research grants with this... Uh, what do they call it? This, not admin charge... They said all the money should come to Abuja. TSA. With this TSA, could they access the money on time? Sir, if we cannot access the money on time, and research has timeline, are we going to be able to do due diligence in that research? And uh, do we like returning the money to the grantees? How many people have returned money before to, 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 uh, to grant us? How many people? I think I've, I've done, I've done that. I returned some 4,000 plus dollars. So, yes. When? Yes. I returned it because during that time, the Senate did not see it on the document. We wanted to print the document out in glossy cover and distribute to everybody in the university. But since they did not see it on that at that very particular point in time, I had to return the money. So, but the point on grant is this. Let us re-engineer our system to ensure that, that what? That fund are released on time. So, sir, over to you, sir. And uh, to, through you to, sir, ma. No, I mean, through you, sir, ma, to the vice chancellor. Uh -huh. So that they will, they will help us in that regard. Yes. So, international IRB approvers. So, if a study is proposed in Harvard and you have got a sub award, must you get an IRB approval locally? Since it's Harvard now, must you get a, an IRB approval locally? Somebody said no. Somebody said no. Somebody said yes. Okay, I think the writing is 
is what is yes because what they do in harvard may not be applicable here so there are cultural differences okay there are regulational differences so we should note that yes when you leave all this all this if you see they the reason why i put picture is that they said some academics have said if you don't put pictures people will get bored so and that's why i look for picture here and there to put <laughs> so i'm sorry <laughs> so international regulation how be protocols amendment to protocols methodology and did you discover any methodological flaw during the course of research? Have you ever done a research that when you were in the middle, you discover a methodological flaw? If you discover a flaw, more, what must you do? According to the politician, they will say, go back to the drawing board. That's the politician. In the in academic, what must you do? You can, methodology, okay, if the methodology is faulty, can you continue? get to the feed because of COVID or any pandemic, you still find out that you cannot hang on for life. You conduct your research with the interview with maybe 25 out of the 35 you have proposed. You will still record in the limitation that this was what was calculated, but this was what was actually done. Okay. Now, another, another dimension. If, another dimension. Thank you. I think uh, it depends on the problem you are facing. If it is just a minor problem of population issue, you, that one can be re reported in limitation. And even with that, you still have to go back to, to the source to let them know for approval. Then if it is more than just the population issue, you have to go back and retrace because if it is that you have to reduce the location or change the equipment, you just have to go back to the source to know what Can you now pick uh, what you should do here in case of methodological? So, the option. Which one is the best and the safest? Hey. A. Hey. We saw the A. Do we concur with A? Yes. Uh-uh. That yes is not resounding. Yes. yes. Hmm. I understand. I understand. More understand. A, A and C. A. Now, the point on grant is this. The standard is A. But some people have given some explanation. But most of the time, even if it's going to affect the life of people, we hide it and we carry on. It is not good. Yes, next one. So did you discover any limitation in the study design? So how will you handle it uh, during the course of the research? So in, if the study design itself is faulty, eh? Well, I don't know too much Bible. If the foundation is, eh? So what will the researcher do? If the study design is, design has problem. So that means, yes, next one. Inclusion and exclusion criteria. In the process, of research, some people modify the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Must you know, okay, the next slide. 
if you are explain now if you modify the inclusion and the exclusion criteria can you do it on your own without recourse to ethics committee hello so what must you now do amendment to protocol you write and they approve i think sir do i have a member of the ethics committee here ah member another member no other member you are the chair you are representing the committee i hope i am not stepping beyond my boundary okay thank you now i think were you able to stick to the sample size as indicated in the protocol most of the time along the line we amend we amend the sample size and when we amend the sample size it has a lot of implication for future reference i think we should so next one um grantee execution processes monitoring of processes startup so is the research a laboratory investigation or what yes next one let's go on informed consent language of informed consent yes now i think we should ask ourselves the question was was the consenting process properly implemented now excuse me ma medical people will it be right for you yes ma'am okay where should i stay so that the two should i stay in the middle okay what should i do ma okay yes ma okay all right thank you now informed consent did the participant understand okay we were talking about proper implementation ma you are in the medic and you are okay <laughs> what, we, what are we now going to do okay that's great now you are a medic and you are sending research assistants into the field to operationalize and inform consent that is related to genetic modification or messenger RNA as they use in a uh, COVID, you know, COVID testing. And you want to go and talk to market women. Will it be good for you to recruit me because I can speak through Wenchi to go and explain that process to them? Will I be the right person to go? Will I be the right person? No. So that means if you are a professor of medicine, you can get your research assistants to be at least, at least a house officer. Or, you know, the, some resident doctors who have been, don't get the right thing. So, Ipa, please be giving them because it's a legal document. Now, well, uh, sometimes I go out with my wife because of legal cover, so that <laughs> if, <laughs> you know, these days, eyes are getting hooked. Medical people, that it had to, you know, they've treated people shabbily sometimes. They are going to be suing them as people understand their right. So, the earlier we do the right thing, the better. So, the serious adverse event, uh, was there any serious adverse event in the process of, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know. But if it is serious, if it will involve life, please 
as quickly as possible report back to the ethics committee. Next slide. So, if there's any serious adverse effects, will it cause amendment to the protocol? Will it cause it? Ye the truth is yes, but the practice is no. The, who is stopping it? Okay, yes, I could remember. Ma, when last did you go to the field? to monitor the project that you approve at the ethics committee. Microphone, oh. the chair is talking. Oh. Um, the ethics committee is supposed to have that uh, responsibility of going to the field, of uh, monitoring what is done on the field. Yes. But what happens, like, we have, a, we have there some, diff some I would say, um, well, I would say challenges, but there are new things that are coming up this year because we've had challenges in carrying that out. And one of the challenges we've had is the issue of the payments people make to be able to facilitate that process. Because if you are uh, paying uh, for research processing for your ethical clearance and all you're paying is 2,000 Naira, I don't know how many times you would want an ethics member to be on the field to cover that. But how, what we do around that is to make sure that we know who the PI is. The PI is the person who holds responsible for all the research ethics that we clear. So that if there's any issue, the person is who, who will hold responsible. And of course, there are some researches we cannot let go that way. If it's a research that has to do with invasive procedures, we take that extra step to go out, but we've not had any such in the last, um, let me say, five or six years that I've been on the board. But the, the ethics committee, the Earth Research Ethics Committee, is domiciled in the Institute of Public Health, in the College of Health Sciences. There is a chairman, and it runs independently of the institute. And every researcher on the campus, undergraduates, postgraduates, and private researchers, if they're either granted or not, they are to go through that. The ethics committee is open for everybody to come in to apply and get your clearance. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So you've heard from the ethics committee. But one question is this. How many papers have I published? Maybe 10. How many papers went through the ethics committee? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, some people, some people are saying, no, my research is not invasive. And therefore, I must not go to the ethics committee. You know how many ethics committee we have at the University of Ibadan? We have for uh, animal, we have uh, plants, we have uh, engineering. So, everywhere, there should be an ethics committee monitoring, and even if it's only one, Go through the ethics committee so that when you want to, how many people want to publish in? Thank you very much. It's interesting. It's interesting, ma'am. So, you want to say something, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Concerning what you just said there. Okay. For, for what purpose? In okay. particular? Thank, thank you, ma'am. Now, we are talking about making sure that we internationalize our research. We are talking about making sure that we can publish in nature, we can publish in science. We are talking about research that when we publish one paper, eh, it will have impact around the globe. The standard is all your protocol has to go through ethics committee. They could give it full approval. 
they could give it expedited approval and they could, you know, there is a third level of approval. Remind me. Oh, you have, maybe when I remember. Yes. Exempt, expedited, full. Okay. Yes. Exempt. I've remembered. Exempt, expedited, and full committee approval. Yes. Anyway. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Maybe they can do that in one AUEA. Because somebody that, for example, let me give you an example. The postgraduate, I mean, the postgraduate studies that we normally do here. I don't know. Actually, thank God for the way they are doing now, but during our own time, somebody that doesn't know about your own area or your own field will be correcting your work. But we will know that this person doesn't understand this thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Because of our time, we will go on. I will take question later. But. I will, I will quickly respond. I will quickly respond. You, do, you really don't understand what we are saying. In postgraduate work, postgraduate college, it is purely academic. Purely academic. Now we are talking beyond academic. This is beyond the field of academic. This is ethics, compliance, and integrity. And on the board of the ethics, we have multidisciplinary people. And of course, one of the most important people in the ethics committee is who? Is the lay person. Lay person that does not understand true Wenchi. A lay person from the community. A lay person that is from the community. That you must interpret all the jingoism of you know of uh, your research tool and he or she must understand it and approve of it before it is approved do you understand sir so later so let's move on so informed consent yes let's move on yes hello timeline when you get an international grant and you run against time, what must you do? You report to your international grantee and they, they give you a no-cost extension. Okay? A no-cost extension. But then, the problem is most of us, because we don't want to lose face, eh? what do we do? Okay, go on. Research meetings. How many minutes have we spent here? Okay. So let's just scroll. Hello. Let's just scroll up. If I have so, okay, I'll finish. Appreciation. Now, research, research meetings. Hey, yes. Let me just take one minute and talk about research meetings. The problem with us is that we don't hold research meetings as regularly as we ought to hold it. And when we hold it, we don't have records because we don't want to employ an admin person. Yes. Yes. Somebody asking a question. And when we don't train the admin person to be able to know the right thing to write, we get the wrong thing. Even when, yes, we get the wrong thing because the admin person will write if the admin person does not know the focus. That means from the beginning, you have to get a team together and they must know what you really want. Eh? to do. Yes. yes Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, on the expose on research ethics. But I have a question. I need you to put um, maybe throw more lights on it about research um, getting um, approval for research. Like, if I followed what you are saying, you have just told us that every research you must get approval. Yes, ma'am. And and I, 
I'm from political science. Oh, yes, ma'am. Social sciences. And if I'm writing a position paper, if, if I'm writing a position paper that does not require me going to the field, must I? A position paper about what? About, about any topic in political science. Give a specific example. OK, maybe I, I want to write about um, Nigerian election. Yes. In 2020, OK, PDP pr primaries. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to, perhaps I didn't, I didn't need to go to the field. And I just, I have paper online. I have documents. And I don't need to go to the field to make inquiry or make research or collect data. Do I still need to? Go to research ethics. Okay. I mean, research. Now, uh, when you are doing. Ethics. Thank you very much. When you are doing research, it is not research for me sake. It is research for us sake. If you are writing a position paper, whose position? My position. Uh -huh. And you know, as an academia, you don't have a position. You have to be. Objective. That is where I'll get my, my, I'll get my, um, my other people's opinion, my literature uh, from maybe yes. the internet or books. I understand. I don't have to deal with Objectivity in itself is a form of subjectivity. Because if I'm a leftist, I will be objective from the leftist point of view. If I am a rightist, I will be objective from the rightist point of view. You know, in um, Washington, D.C., people from the State House were seated, you know, one day, and I asked them a question. All these uh, lie, that was when Trump came in as the president. I said, why can't you just give research to people in language and critical discourse analysis to come and talk about all these fake news or all these things, you know? If they drop a pin. Uh, somebody will hear that because people from the state house they were looking at me who is this black boy you know asking us such questions so please man whatever you want to do and it will be published you have to go through international protocol if you want your paper to have international impact thank you man but it's not funded <laughs> i am fu uh, it's not funded <laughs> Yes, for all the, now, research ethics protocol, I repeat, is for all forms of research, whether education, whether politics, whether sociology, whether medicine, whether pharmacy, or what have you. It is. So that is it. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. I, I have a question. And I want to paint two scenarios so that you help us answer well, the question. Hey, painter. Okay, no now, problem. <laughs> now, there are two, two geologists who want to do a research. One of them is looking at the change in rock patterns in the Leife. The other one is looking at activities of people in the Leife that has had impact on the changes on rock patterns. One of them is just going into Ilefe and is just picking up rock and analyzing the rocks. The other one is looking at human beings, what they are doing around that area, and is trying to look at how will it affect the changes in the rock patterns. Do they both need to get ethical approval from a review board? Yes. Yes, and uh, yes, we have served ab initio from the beginning that whatever research you want to do, you must look at the impact and the effect on people. Thank you very much. So, the, my time is up. So. <laughs>
Yes, let's go to research integrity. Something. Okay, well, let's stay here too. No, we can pick, pick anyone. Yes. I want to appreciate you so far for your participation. I could see that all of us are inquisitive. You know, many years ago I was sentenced to the office of UIUCHT's committee office and I spent about nine years there. So, and that was why and how I know so little about those things. Uh -huh. So, that is why I know so little. So, whatever I tell you, I can give you at least 100 reasons why it, it is like that. When we talk about conflict of interest, hmm, it's a great question. Yes, next slide. Well, no, just the definition will come thereafter. Ma. So there are some definitions thereafter. But I know that everybody could just go online and see a definition. But the understanding is procurement standard of procurement standard in research. Do we have Yes. You know, pro procurement is part of research. Because if you need to buy some kits, eh, they are doing COVID testing now. They are putting something in people's nose. Is that not painful? Eh? If there are some other things which they could use that is not that painful, they should use it now. But if they give you money to buy an equipment, that is of that of a very good standard and you buy the one that is of a very low standard so why why did you do it in the first instance great yes something is fighting there is a boxing and wrestling going on should i do it should i not do it that is what they call conflict so it is friction abi in engineering they call it friction abi uh -huh. That is conflict. Of what? Of the grantor's interest, the people's interest, and my own interest. So when there is a when there is a collusion, uh, uh, have you ever seen this uh, advertisement in BCOS? Gongwaso, uh, eh? Gongwaso. Uh, eh? Gongwaso, Otiso. So there was an air down collision and uh, you know there was fire. So when there is conflict of interest, what you have built, the reputation you have built in your research over how many years could just be messed in the waters in one day or one year. Have you ever heard from a, any university where they withdrew the professorship of somebody? Because the person plagiarized the thesis of another person from another continent? Professors have affirmed it. If professors have affirmed it, it is affirmed. So, it has happened before. So, we have to be careful. Next slide. Conflicts of interests, the one within you, and conflict of commitment. I think I cited conflict of commitment the other time, that uh, you are pharmacists and uh, you are members of ethics committee, you know. Let's not repeat that. Yes. Conflict of interest and commercialization. If my product, if what I'm working upon will become a product, how much due diligence do I take? To ensure that that research is conducted according to international best practices. 
That's a question for us to answer. Yes, next one. So this is um, UCF conflict of interest and commitment system, you know, it's very, you know, they have a lot of processes. It is not that conflict of interest, we should not have it. We all have conflict of interest. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah. We're not saying we should not have it. But if we have it, we must declare it. We must disclose it. So the ethics committee, the ethics committee will now look at it. Okay, can we accommodate it? Is it possible for this person to carry on hmm, and do this research or not? Do you understand? Yes. You can look at that process later. It's a complex one. Now, so this is what is academic now. That one is just preamble. So that we can understand it. Now, official role as a researcher, staff or member of, a, of, of organization, when it contradicts personal interests, you are a lecturer in the university, in Atobafemi Awolowo University. Okay? And uh, what you are supposed to do, for instance, you are a lecturer and your child is very intelligent okay you set a question in the exam and you're a very intelligent child eh, filled that exam and you are using your own hand to to do yourself what will you do so Pass mark, oh, that's not good enough. That's what we are talking about. So, conflict, uh, no, don't go to that wife. Oh. Ah, that one can burn out so. Ah, that one can burn out so. Ah, I didn't want to go there. Oh. Ah. You will not sleep at home again. Conflict of interest may be financial. It could be commitment. It could be ownership. It could be association. My brother, there's something coming up here. Hey, no, I will get, we'll get there. We'll get there. In the ethical protocol of research, a researcher is expected to declare his or conflict of interest. If you are a member of P and B Pharmaceutical, you are a shareholder there, and you are part of the committee that is reviewing a protocol for that product, you must tell them at the ethics committee that you are a member. And uh, what would the ethics committee say you should do? You should excuse them. That means you must not grade the paper of your baby, of your son of your daughter. That's the best thing. That's the best thing to do. Yes. Let's go on. Many of conflict of interest, a person's personal rational and financial underlying forces could be cloud in sense of judgment in his primary assignments. Next slide. Context of conflict of interest. Ah, did I talk about wife? No. So, if I'm a member of a review committee and my wife protocol is there, so having two or multiple roles are, are not illegal until one provides a platform to act unethically, you know, in the other. So, conflict of interest is inevitable, but could be minimized, could be alleviated. It could be avoided. Okay, next one. Conflict of interest and law. So, where, do I have a lawyer in the house? I want a lawyer to one. Ah, well, you yes, uh -huh. So that's why I brought my law, so uh, so that I can have a <laughs> a legal cover. 
Jira ya kuwafu ndugu kova. Now, I, I, I glean it from their books. I cannot interpret it. So, don't take me up. So, no, no of thought. The act of COI is not taught in itself. That means it's not wrong doing in itself. Eh? It's what? Is evidence of thought. Evidence of wrong doing. That means conflict of interest that is inside of you, that is not operationalized, that is not used, is not conflict of interest. Until it is proven by law of evidence, you know, concrete evidence and uh, some other evidences, like uh, they will talk about it. For many specialists, it is practically incredible to avoid conflict of interest. Legal matter could surface if an individual attempt influencing the outcome of an, of an official decision for personal economic benefits, a breach of duty of loyalty. Now, I am to be loyal to this university. And I'm on the board of third fund. My wife has applied for third fund grants. Uh, Ten minutes, yes. And Myself and myself, we have worked on that grant. But unfortunately, you know, she did excellently well, but not as well as those people we wanted to give the grant to. We wanted to give maybe to five people, and she came number six. What, she, what will I do? I hope I'm not saying anything. Somebody wants to talk. Okay, please let, let the person talk. Oh. Ah. Let the person talk. Oh. I, pray, I pray that God will help you. Amen. You have to allow your wife. I pray that God will help you. Amen. You have to allow your wife to, num to be number five so that you can have a home to go to. Hello, sir. I think the the best option is for you to appeal to the organizer to increase the number to six, so that your wife can be covered, can be considered. <laughs> Sorry. Can I say something? Hello? 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 I want that person to be an objective person when it comes to that. Just follow the criteria that has been laid regardless of who that person is, whether your relative or not. Hello. I think the best thing to do is that I want to step out. I want to be part of the selection panel. If my wife is part of the applicant and I'm a, a member, with that session, I will step out. I will not be part of that selection so that I will be neutral. So, thank you very much. Uh, we want to go on, please, please, later. There will be time for question and answer later. You can note it, please, please. No, but it's interesting. We are, we are the, we are the, we are tomorrow, we are the tomorrow of this university. We are going to craft the policies. We should put all those things in the policies. 
whatever is in the policy, we should follow. Whatever is not in the policy, we should please. When I was in the University of California, Davis, let me tell you this. In the University of California, Davis, a president of a university was removed because she gave appointment to his uh, son-in-law. So, we are coming there. Okay, there should be policy. So, part of, ma, they know that they want to form a policy. So, now, let's Well, these are the, hello, these are the ones, conflict of interest that I was able to pick. There are lots in conflict of interest. If you take Black Law Dictionary, you know, you will see a lot of conflict. I don't want to go into that place. But here, we have personal, we have institutional, we have financial and non-financial, we have dual employment. And we have relational, you know, here. But when public and private compete and collide, I am Aliko Dangote. Do you know I am Aliko Dangote? I put down fund for the manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccine. And I remember, I'm a member of the review board for approval of the vaccine. Is it ethical? Okay. Obama my Wolowo University as interest in a particular research, okay? And uh, they passed it through Obafemi Awolowo University uh, Ethics Committee. Who will say no to an institutional research project in the Ethics Committee? Madam, Madam Chia, will you say no? Ma, ah, ma. Speak, ah, please speak up. They say you should speak up. We have protocols that, that uh, state all the things that the uh, research must have and must, you must supply. Mm -hmm. And if you fail to, uh, to give all those information and it's not worth it giving a clearance, whether it's institutional or not, we cannot give, we cannot give you the clearance. All we can tell you, we can, because we still vet, we can give you corrections. We do that a lot in the HRA committee. We, we give you a correction of all the things we found, we found faulty in that protocol you've submitted, and we give you back to go and amend, and you would submit back a revised version. Thank you. Maybe, maybe later. We'll see the solution later. But the solution is not as CC as she has projected it. So, financial. It could be financial. Dual employment, relational, that is applicable to child, to spouse, or to anybody, you know, in employment or service delivery. Yeah, let's go on. Individual conflict of interest. I am the chair of an institutional ethic review committee, manufacturing COVID-19 person in Africa. On the other hand, Fan B had contacted me as a lead specialist for clinical trial. If the protocol for the ethical trial flies. Remember, Fan B will pay me dollars and lodge me in seven star hotel during my assignment. So what will I do? I will declare my conflict of interest. Will I declare it? Have I declared it before? Okay, I must declare it. I hear. Yes, recommendations. These are recommendations. It's not total, but we could generate our own recommendations. So, institution must, must have an operate conflict of interest policy where there is no law. There is no sin. Two, researchers must disclose fully their conflict of interest. Individual financial product investment and institutional. Do we have any conflict of interest form in the university? There's no is there conflict of interest policy presently? 
we are developing it. Uh, we should develop it well. Uh -huh. So, yes. And uh, institutions should use independent ethics committee that is not institutional. In case of that, ma, ma, I think the safer thing is if it's an institutional research, it should go to another independent ethics committee, like the national. If it's Obama Awolo one research, it should go to HNREC in Abuja, they should review it so that they will be objective about it. It's not you use independent ethics committee, uh -huh. community lay person representation and the diversity of professional on the ethics committee. A lay person. Ma, have you ever had an ethics committee? How many minutes? Okay, committee meeting. And uh, you have, uh, you, have you ever gone ahead without the lay person being at the meeting? We have a person on the ethics committee. She's a ma she sells in the markets, okay. in the central market. Of course, there are times she could not attend the meeting, so we, we, we went ahead. Okay. Yes. Now, those meetings, ma, internationally, they are null. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma. Internationally, well, I understand what you're saying, and you are correct, but yes. in those times, there is nothing we could That is do. why you should not have only one, one lay, lay person. Okay, apart from her, who is a lay person, just person on the committee. Uh, and we have people who, yeah, they are not experts in anything we are doing. Uh, they, are they, they are just they are religious people. persons. So they, are, they, are, they also form parts. But if we are talking about the, the, the woman who represents women issues and the uh, community issues. So she, uh, I think you, you should have two or three. So that if one does not come, another person will come. So that's it. So I think uh, we I think we are we are no that contribution. The time is gone. No, no the slide before this one. Yeah. Okay, and we have done it now. So, uh, so we clap for ourselves. We have all made it happen. Okay. I think uh, uh, should we have should we stand up? Public health people, public health people, physiotherapy. Who is in physiotherapy here? Public health. Oh, yeah. Take over. People are sitting for so long. Okay, let's all rise up, please. Let's raise our left hands up, right hand up. Left hand up, your right hand up, your two hands on your shoulder, your two hands on your waist, and you wriggle your waist. You wriggle your waist. You move to the left with your hands on your waist. You move to the right with your hands on your waist, and you sit down. Because of the time, we may not take another one. Uh, uh, it's okay. Then. Because we want to finish by 12. So let's. What about. Uh, which one? No. This is. Uh, uh, yeah, yes.
Okay. Well, we will not be able to take it all, but we have the slide. Let's take a student supervisor relationship. I didn't write so much on that uh, because I am not a teacher. Even though I started as, as a teacher, I'm still teaching. Eh? Sometimes, you know, I'm still teaching on a part time level, you know, in some, you know, I have taught before, but I, I relax. I relax recently. But then, let's talk about this research ethics, research integrity, and responsible conduct of research. When I was researching on this, if you see what I saw online, I don't want to tell you, but I want to ask questions. And all of us, we judge ourselves, okay? Now, first slide. Well, I don't want to presume that everybody is not aware who a student is. A student is anybody that is seeking for knowledge. In a former setting. That is my own layman definition about it. So, and uh, a supervisor or a lecturer is somebody that can give knowledge to somebody that is seeking knowledge in a former setting. Okay, now, must research topic be forced by the supervisor on the students? How many of you have been given your master's thesis topic by your supervisor? Go and work on this topic. Put up your hand. Go on, you know. Oh. Okay. Okay. But we all know sometimes that it happens. It's because of the research bias of the lecturers. Because some of those things that you write may be used by the researcher to publish. We don't blame them. But one thing is that we must make our policy friendly that we must give we must give our students to lecturers that will be able to um, that, that will be able to help them achieve their goals in research. Even if they are going to go outside the faculty, we could have dual superficial roles. Okay, like I was working on for my PhD, working on. Um, Boko Haram, and um, you know, in the area of critical discourse analysis, and uh, I got to a particular level. I was making some some uh, social, you know, inferences from what I was writing. And my guy said, "No, we don't do that here. Leave those things." to them in social sciences. And the craft of me is that whatever I'm writing or I'm doing that does not have social impact, I'm not going to be comfortable with it. I think in that scenario, if you have a particular department like that, I think my organ could collaborate with somebody in peace and conflict and say, oh, I'm the primary supervisor, you are the secondary supervisor. Let's bring English language, critical discourse analysis together with peace and conflict, mediation, arbitration, and all those type of things. We'll put it together, and we help this candidate to be able to achieve it from the dual dimension. You understand? But we should, we should take note of this in research. Next slide. Who is the first author for a student project dissertation 
or thesis that I supervise. I am not here to touch on now, so please don't. If I'm getting out of my domain, please better tell me. Yes, yeah, somebody wants to say something. Okay, people that have not spoken before. If the supervisor, hello, yes, sir. If the supervisor conceived the idea, I think what matters is the conception of the idea. And there should be a mutual agreement. If the idea, the conception of the idea is from the supervisor. I think it is not wrong for the supervisor to be the lead author. Thank you. Must the supervisor, a supervisor that what it sought, conceive an idea for a master's or PhD student? No. So if it is no, but some students are very weak, they rely on their supervisor. That their means they are idea. not good for postgraduate. Thank you. Next slide. Now, excuse me, sir. In uh, in uh, OAU, do we have a course that is called research methodology? Yes. And all the master students will do research methodology. And PhD level, yes. and you still say they cannot conceive an idea. Who is teaching the research methodology there? Ah, no, we should please don't say that outside, though. We should not say it's outside. As a supervisor, can I go out with my student on a date? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, dear. You did not specify what we do. Any set. It's wrong. Sir? It's wrong. It is wrong. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So, irrespective of sex, he has said that it is wrong. But uh, what is the accountability age in, uh, in Nigeria? 18. 18. In this university, do we have sexual harassment policy? Number two question. Number two question. Sir, I have a different opinion. If it's a male supervisor that is interested in the female student, a mm. PG student, and mm. you actually want to marry her, mm. then why not? You are... You You know, you are not married. The supervisor is not married. And you want to marry yours. Is it wrong? Hello. Time has gone. I shouldn't have taken this last one. I will have taken another one. We all know the... We, Yes, ma'am. Hello? Hello? Please, we need to move on. This is seven minutes to please one house. There was a faculty webinar two weeks ago on this topic by health sciences and well discussed. 
we are not going to repeat that discussion here. But for the records, for the records, please note, it is when there is force that is a problem. If there is no force, if a girl does not complain, it is allowed. So more force. You didn't let me finish, oh. You didn't let me finish. Some of us married our lecturers. Yes. I stand uh, guilty. It was not by oppression. It's not a case of if you don't marry me, you will not pass. So there is a difference. Please, let's go on. Thank you. Well, I think... Uh, Mama has spoken, Prof has spoken, but I think we should get something. When we are looking at local practices, we should be careful of international best practices. Taking out your students on a date, it depends on the law that is operating in that university. And uh, taking out your student on for a lunch over there important things are discussed at lunch tables but over here the moment i invite you for lunch even if i'm not going to say it you are jittery already if i'm an american trained person and i just come to this university i'll take my student out for lunch and I will, I will not think it's bad. But the person may tell some other student, ah, he has asked me out for lunch. So wherever you are, when you're in Rome, study the Roman laws and behave like Romans. Well, can I share domestic challenges with my students? Can my students share domestic challenges with me? That is loaded. I think we should look at the ethics that is there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, professors, senior lecturers, lecturer one, lecturer two, all the lecturers that are here, please, I doff my heart. I thank you for listening. Hello. It's uh, a few minutes to 12. We want to thank Mr. Akindele for keeping to time. We started exactly at 10. Those who came early know that we started at 10. And next week, Thursday, by the grace of God, we are starting exactly at 10. You can see it's getting more and more interesting. Next, next week, don't let me preempt. It's going to be even better. Uh, now I'm hearing questions and answers. If you want to stay and hear questions, please we will invite Mr. Akindele back to take questions. But if you have to leave, our two hours is up. You are free to leave. I wish everyone, I mean, we would contain everything within the two hours, but it's not possible. Shortly after this, I'll send the slides to you. If you have questions, you are free to interact with him. But let me say something. I wanted to give an example on what is eth uh, not ethical. A PG student came to me when I was dean and complained. His supervisor, whenever he had a party, would ask him to carry him, drive him, in his student's car. Do you understand? Not that he's driving the supervisor's car. It is the student that will fuel the car, drive it, and take And I said, no problem, sir. 
Does that student have the opportunity of writing when he's driving? I mean, is that the only time available for you to interact? An abuse is an abuse. Koloru um, komi. You see, um, we, like Mr. Kindele has emphasized, the world is now global. You will publish and uh, you send to a journal, they will ask you conflict of interest. You need to know what it means. They ask all sorts of questions. You need to know what it means. Uh, people have asked, is it all areas of research? Honestly, I've done almost uh, how many 30 years here? I never asked for ethical review. But when we got an IDRC grant and we needed to publish, the journal we sent our paper to asked for ethical clearance. So we had to go to uh, the ethical, com we paid 25, was it 25 or 20,000? We even had to revise our protocol before we got that clearance. So I'm just saying this to say that the fact that you've not been doing it does not mean that it, it cannot be done. It depends on the journal. Different journals have different uh, standards. And if you want to publish in a good journal, you have to follow their protocol. Thank you. Mr. Kindele, please come back. Uh, Mrs. Olumakaye, Professor Olumakaye, she will handle the questions and answer session. She's also a member of the team organizing this program. So, let's give it up for Mr. Kindele. I'm sure we really had a nice time. We cannot exhaust this topic. It's very, very, very germane. When you talk of research ethics, academic integrity, and responsible conduct of research, they are issues in the university. And uh, the good news is that we are putting together a policy on research integrity, and it will include the conflict of interest. If you are happy about that, can you please wave to me? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, there is a difference between supervision and mentorship. So you can take your relationship beyond academic if you are mentoring a student. But if you want to limit it to supervision, let it be ethically, you know, guided by exactly what you are doing. That's just a clarification. There is a difference between mentorship and supervision. We will post some things online that you can read up. Do you have questions? Uh, oh. <laughs> we have to give number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finally, no, eight, then prof, nine. Let me go again. After that, we won't take any question again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then nine. Yeah. Number one, please. Just go straight to the question. We don't have the luxury of time. Question one. Come, come. No, 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 no. Come and speak Sorry. to the mic. Yeah. My question is on the authorship issue when you have a, a grant research where you have a professor as the PI and you have some other people and out of the research work you have to write articles and you pair yourself and you have about five papers from the work in the team and which one is right? The PH should be the first author in all the papers. That is my okay, question. Okay, that is authorship. Who is the first author? author? Who is the second? In what order should they list the authorship? That's the question. Yes, I'm just reiterating it so that she can get it. Question two. We have to know how. Please, I want to ask. Is it pardon to validate a new instrument during pilot studies? Okay, validation of instrument during pilot study. Number three. My question on is on this uh, relationship between a supervisee and a supervisor, and I'm wondering why it is a problem when um, a female has a male supervisor. 
and then maybe they go out for a date just to eat somewhere for a lunch. The voltage of gossip and eyes are, goes high. But when it's a male and a, a supervisor that is a male and a supervisee that is a male, nothing happens. If you visit, you can visit your supervisor and you can go out with your supervisor, no problem. So what is the question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's so the question, what is the problem? Is it that I feel I feel it's an insult on the on women or on ladies? Because does it mean I can't think for myself? Does it mean I don't know what I want that you are now thinking that maybe because you saw me with my supervisor, you don't think that oh they have right, that's an you. insult. So that's an insult. Please, I want you to throw more light. What what's the what's the reason for that? Okay, yeah, we've heard that. Thank you. That is talking about harassment, kind of. People term it to mean harassment or like you are having a relationship with your supervisor, even when there is nothing going on just to go for lunch. It's because of our culture. We are not matured yet. <laughs> Number four. Thank you very much. I actually have a comment and one question. My comment goes to uh, uh, Professor who came from Research Ethics Committee. I will please... Uh, appeal that you organize a kind of awareness campaign meeting like this i will appeal that you organize a kind of awareness uh, campaign so that okay. we can know more about research ethics most of us are just hearing for the first time that you exist wow. i'm sorry that's interesting you are from which department we i'm from mathematics department to uh, introduce yourself and the department okay together. i am dr Ereji from department of mathematics and my models are usually on my computer in my office. Okay. So I wonder what I need ethics people for. So if you train us or if you teach us, educate us, then maybe we can right. begin to talk to you more. My so, question, how will there not be conflict of interest when a student is going out with the supervisor, regardless of the sex, during the research? Going out, dating involves emotion. So I still find it difficult to wrap my head around it where there will not be conflict of interest while that research is ongoing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Number five now. Yeah, thank you very much. I just want a clarification. Sir, you said it is not right for uh, a PI or a supervisor to give um, maybe a topic to a PhD student or a master's student. Did that, I, I'm not sure if I'm right about that. Topic, topic, a project topic. Okay, what of a situation whereby there is an existing grant and there are topics already that need to be addressed and the student is admitted into that grant? It's even at, up on, um, abroad. Yeah, thank you. Okay, number six. Number six, we have nine people. Actually, that's the question I wanted to ask also. But apart from a grant, sir, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm the supervisor now. I, have, I don't have a grant, but I have what I'm interested in. I have an area I'm interested in. So if you want to work with me, you must be able to work in that area that I'm interested in. But I think the only thing is that maybe I have some problems that we need to solve. The student can now come up with specific ways of solving the problem. But the general, the conceptualization is from me. Because that's the problem I want to address. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's just a comment. It's not really a question. Okay. Number seven or eight. Okay, number eight. Thank you, sir, for the teaching. I would like you to please help me explain some of the abbreviations you took for granted. For example, what is a PI? And what is um, an IRB? Right. PI right, outrightly means principal. Okay, my, principal and my other question is when does designing a, an ethical um, report come into play? Is it when you are doing an abstract for a research or after you are done or when you want to publish 
at what stage do you begin to ask about ethics and all that? Okay. Prof, is just a question or a comment? Or we allow him to wrap up before you... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, presenter. I just want you to, in a very succinct way, to summarize the quantum effect of one institution that abides by all these norms that connect integrity, ethics, and compliance in terms of the quantum leap and another institution that turns a blind eye. I want you to match the two scenarios. To succinctly capture that, that's talking about reputation of the university, in effect of uh, conflict of interest or research ethics and integrity on the reputation of the institution. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Well, there, there was another slide that we didn't take. There were some other slides that we didn't take that talk on that. Let me start with Prof. If you go to ORI, you can just go online now, ORI, Office of Research Integrity. There are a lot of universities that have been, that have been um, indicted, eh? that have been indicted because they did not comply. Do you think Harvard will fall victim of research non-compliance and integrity? The idea, big names, yes. Oh, all right, just go online. Office of Research, you will see cases of research misconduct. Harvard is involved, you know, some big names are involved, and the implication on the researcher is that a researcher that is an independent researcher may have his research supervised for five years. You are a professor, and they are supervising you for five years because of lack of compliance it's embarrassing please we should comply with research integrity to my legal will i say friend now yes you are my friend sir uh, because a friend of my friend is my friend now a pi is who they call principal investigator in a secondary school you have the head as the principal is the arrowhead and a principal investigator is responsible for the actions and inactions of that that happen in any particular research you talk about research design research design research ethics when should we do it we are talking about the moment we are thinking research we should think culture. Culture is the ethics. Ethics we dovetail into regulations. Regulations must be obeyed and must be complied with. There must be honesty and integrity in the research design. That means research ethics protocol has to be designed for the research hub in nature. Because some people finish their research and they want to now ask for research ethics approval. No, that is medicine after that. Yes, Ma, with you, Ma, you are thinking about women, insult to women. I am a focal person for gender mainstreaming. And thank God I live in guest hostel. I could defend the I could defend the integrity of womanhood even at the at the Supreme Court of the United States because I believe in women I believe in the gay child and I believe in protecting them ladies and gentlemen if we are not going to deceive ourselves our society is not corrupt you know is not full of corruption, sure, but full of corrupt key, you know, very thick level of corruption taken for granted. It is not that 
there's a professor in UI that married a, a supervisor, a, a female professor. So it's not that it's it's do away, but Madam has concluded it. If it is not by force, it is not against the law. If it is by force, it is against the law. Yes, uh, there was another question on authorship. Authorship. Somebody that is coming in because there is a grant for molecular biology wrote something that the work should not be done by the supervisor. If you are producing a PhD student and that PhD student cannot even think of how to craft a research topic for himself, how do you expect him to train other people tomorrow to craft PhD topic? So you, you can help him to craft. You can help him to think. But the conceptualization should not be your own business if we are to do well for the system. So I am not, I am not in that area. I'm not an authority, but my authorities are here. They can validate it or not. Validation of validation of uh, instruments during uh, during pilot study. What is a pilot study in the first instance? A pilot study eh, is a study that is not a full-fledged study. And uh, if you want to use an instrument, okay, uh, if you say that an instrument that you want to use is not validated, and uh, must you validate it, before you use it for pilot study. It's like somebody that is a learner. A learner, you put him on the road, and you put learner at the back, okay? And the first vehicle that you have given to the learner is to drive a Dangote lorry truck. A, but the people in our, our professors can shed more light on that. I am not an authority in that area, but then, I think that it's better to start from the known. Any other question that remains? The PI, like SMA, there could be multi-center study. The PI in Nigeria, if there's a paper from Nigeria on that very particular grant, I think the PI, the co-PI in Nigeria should be the lead author here. Eh? Okay, sis. It's not in all cases. I participated in a five country uh, project or whatever. And uh, my own section, food, what we just did was that we put the PI on all the publications, but the name of the PI was at the end. We, yes, because it's uh, not corresponding. It was not, it was just tagging at the end. The PI submitted the proposal on behalf of all of us. But for each section, we wrote up our own uh, um, whatever uh, concept. But some, it's like this project we are running. I, I am the PI, but I didn't write the project alone. Different people had different components. So I will say for each paper, my name, Lai Lai. What she has said is this, that the overall PI, well, we are not talking about mentorship today. Mentorship will tell you that at a particular point in time, the mentor should take the back seat. And the mentee, who is the most active, should take the front seat. You understand? That is what she has just explained. Conflict of interest again. We, we have said it. We have said it. So thank you very much. I'm so grateful. Thank you. So on this note, we want to say thank you to our resource person. Thank you to our participants. See you next week. And thank you for, to the, all the support staff. Have a lovely day.